This has been a very slow going project that started last summer when I got the idea to build a rover that would just permanently live out at our flight testing field and automatically drive around whenever its solar panels were producing enough power to do so. Here's a build compilation with all the trial and error along the way. All right, so here we are cutting steel for the frame, then welding it together. So much grinding, so much welding. Got some 5 8 inch bolts for the axles. The steel frame is totally overkill and I probably would have made it out of something else if I were doing this again. Got my 10 inch Harbor Freight tires on there. Wee, there I go. I decided to use these brushless gear motors, which was a bad idea. They come with these little ESCs built in, but they take a normal PWM signal to control, not a servo style PWM signal. So I removed the ESC and soldered extensions directly onto the phase wires and I connected those to a hobby ESC which seems to work well. I built a little sliding chain tensioner here, which didn't work. My initial plan was to have one motor per side, so two motors total. After that, I tried a spring-loaded chain tensioner, which didn't work either for some reason. I kind of forget why. After that, I went with one motor per wheel, which worked a lot better. It could drive around pretty well at this point, but there were still some issues. The rover doesn't really have enough power to turn, and also I've got this uh, multi-rotor ESC, which um, it doesn't do reverse, so it can't do true skid steer, where one set of tires goes forward and the other set goes backwards. So to make it turn a little better, I'm going to cut it in half and shorten the wheelbase a little bit. Yeah, she's a little shorter now. Uh, I shortened it by, I don't know, maybe three inches. Should turn a little better. What do you think? Hi, doggy. Hello, dog. How are you? That sort of turns. It looks so much better, too. The only reason that one wheel is spinning is because it's dragging and the ESCs don't have braking. Sick. Oh, something's dangling off the front. Oh no, the chain fell off. I'm so happy. <laughs> it turns pretty well on this smooth floor, and I also enabled braking on the ESCs, so that helps. Next, I put a flight controller on it. I ended up having to mount the GPS out on a board to get the compass away from the steel frame as it was causing too much magnetic interference. At this point it was sort of able to do waypoint missions but it still didn't turn very well. I also realized that having a rigid frame wasn't great because only three wheels were contacting the ground most of the time. At that point I decided to cut it in half yet again and give it articulating suspension but without springs or anything like that, just articulation. After that, I put the flight controller electronics back on and went out to the field for some tuning. It was running waypoint missions decently well, which is pretty amazing considering how much GPS position noise there is. It was at this point that I realized my wheelbarrow tires had insufficient traction on wet grass. So I added these 3D printed pieces of plastic here to the tires to give it more traction because when I tested without those last time, it was getting stuck and the tires were just spinning on the ground in the wet grass. So now with these things, every rotation, the tire will kind of unstick itself if it's stuck. Oh, might've just gotten stuck. Oh, wait, the tread things are going. Oh yeah, there we go, see? It'll get stuck and then the tread things will rotate around, give it more traction and it'll keep going. So I'm gonna leave and go work on other stuff and then come back later and see if it's still doing its thing. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, a full service and custom PCB prototyping service. They offer instant quotes, quick turn fabrication, low volume production, and more. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Have you ever wanted to make your electronics projects look more professional? Or are you a small business that needs a low cost, quick turn PCB fabrication? If so, check them out at PCBWay.com. Their website has an instant quote feature so you can get started fast. Also, check out this great video on how PCB manufacturing works. Thanks again to PCBWay. I 
did another all day test run. It's about 5.30 in the evening now and I started this thing at nine o'clock in the morning. And I'm pleased to see that it's still going. That's fantastic. This is great. This thing is awesome. It doesn't stop. It just keeps going. If we take a look at this voltage regulator, we're down to 23.1 volts. And I'm running this off of three 9 amp hour 6 cell LiPos, which are all very old and puffy. And the voltage has not dropped that much over the course of the entire day. So that goes to show that this thing does not consume very much power at all, which is going to be a huge benefit when we are running it off solar power. After that, I sprayed some clear coat stuff on the frame and wood to prevent rust, and then I started making the solar panel mounts out of stock aluminum and some old prototype drum parts. So we've got the sun, we've got the rover, I've got a big 16 amp hour 3 cell battery in there, got a GoPro on the front powered off a big power bank so that it can run longer, I made a stronger GPS mast, mounted the charge controller up here, and last but not least we've got our solar cells, so we are ready to test this thing out. I just uploaded the waypoint mission and put it in auto mode, seems to be doing well so far. I'm definitely not going to sit around and watch this thing all day, so I'm going to work. Bye! It's about 2 p.m. and the rover appears to have dug itself a hole and it's stuck. It doesn't look like it got caught on anything specific. It kind of looks like it was just turning. Um, and the wheels on the far side were trying to spin. The wheels on the uh, near side were not because it was turning this way and it just didn't have enough traction to pull around. This ground here is really soft and mossy so that's probably what did it. Once I started it back up, this motor stopped spinning for a little while and then I had to power cycle and now it works again. Um, so it seems maybe this motor ESC combination is not as reliable as I would like it to be. That kind of looks like there are some stripped gears in that motor. Oh yeah, definitely stripped gears. Okay, it's about 6 p.m. Let's see what's up. Oh, we got a stick. Look at that. Or a vine. A thorn vine. Looks like it just kind of dug itself another hole. And yeah, this, this gear is definitely stripped. I was actually surprised earlier when I first realized that motor was stripped. I started it on the mission again and it actually did like a, a lap or two before getting stuck here. So I was surprised it actually did pretty well with only three wheels. But it's obviously not working as well as it should. So it needs some work. I'm gonna throw it in the car, take it home, and figure out what my next move is here. Upon inspecting the faulty gear motor, it appeared the gear didn't actually strip, but one of the axles that the gears were attached to came out of its mounting hole, and this caused the gear teeth to separate. I still think I was probably overloading these little gearboxes, so upgrading them wouldn't be a bad idea. For the next gear motor design, I decided to go with these super cheap Barbie Jeep motors. They spin too fast alone, so I designed an additional 3D printed cycloidal gearbox with a 13 to 1 reduction ratio that goes in series with the Barbie Jeep gearbox. I chose the cycloidal gear design simply because it is super cool. Wow, that is real cool. In episode two of this series, I'll be adding the cycloidal drive to the rover and seeing if it works. Thanks for watching. Bye.